Both blessing that uh, the Nasta brings a charge to Nike uh, Zrinli, and uh, I believe this charge will be applicable to all, especially those that are married. Uh, God gave me a message out of 2 Corinthians 9 and verse number 6, and it says, But this I say then, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. I preach uh, this charge in reference to Micah and Brunley on how God loves a cheerful giver. And unfortunately, most marriages today, they might have giving involved in them, but it's done grudgingly or of necessity, mm -hmm. and it's not done cheerfully. And uh, at the end of this charge, you'll see why it's important to make sure that you not just give in reference to marriage, but you actually give cheerfully. A successful marriage is built upon the concept of giving. If you want a sparing marriage, then give sparingly, amen. But if you all want a bountiful marriage, then you're gonna have to sow bountifully in your giving, one to another and even beyond. Every man has a purpose in his heart. Bible says, so let him give, amen. Not grudging. We can give grudging. We can give with that bad attitude. We can give all I have to. Uh, but God says we want to actually give cheerfully. Not even of necessity. Well, I have to because if I don't, God will be mad at me or my spouse will be mad at me. That you just don't reap that reward. It's not, that's not a bountiful type of giving. And at best, you might get a sparing response. Giving is the means of a good foundation in marriage. And giving is how a proper marriage is to continue. Let me give you a thought about how giving has been a foundation to your all's marriage. Consider these couple of thoughts. Amen. Uh, consider the fact that uh, giving took place to get y'all to this place in your all's lives, which I know you're excited about. Amen. That, that's a blessing. I, I've been asking here and there, y'all ready, y'all ready, and every time it's just, man, just lit up. Yes, we're ready. Amen. And that is, that's a blessing. No one's being uh, dragged to this point, amen. That's good. Amen. God the Father first gave and gave us that example of giving by his giving us Jesus Christ. Amen. We had a need we could not fulfill ourselves, and he gave to that need. Amen. I praise the Lord for that. In Romans chapter 12, though, it talks about how uh, parents, I believe your parents have actually given, uh, given, um, been given to God in reference to salvation, but also in reference to our lives. It says in Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, it says in Romans 12, 1, it says, um, that uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I believe your parents, to get you to this point, have done that. They they allowed God to save their souls. They they gave up some things. That's what repentance is all about. It's it's we cease from our own works and enter into His. We said, not my will, but thine be done. Salvation is not just that you get a you get a little bit better deal. A rich man tried that. He he had all kinds of things, but he saw he lacked one thing, and that was salvation, eternal life. And so he tried to get something to add to him. Salvationism isn't about adding to us. It's about the fact that we must die so that we can then live through Christ. If we save our life, the Bible says that, that we'll lose it. But if we'll lose our life for his sake, the Bible says we'll actually find it. And I believe your parents have done that. There's a, a foundation of giving that has been established. We find that your parents also gave their time and resources to raise you all. Amen? Can I say that not all parents do that? A, a, a lot of parents don't don't give much in the raising of their kids. Matter of fact, they just get a little upset because their kids inconvenient some way uh, too much. Amen. I try not try. I try not to live that way. Amen. I I realize that God has given that give us precious gifts, and I want to do right. I know the Elsons would say the same thing. Your parents did not pawn your education off one another, uh, but gave themselves to educate you all. Amen. In the things of God and also for life, they gave to do that. Amen. And that's a blessing. You see, there's a foundation of giving established. First with God, of course, and then through y'all's parents. It's a foundation that's been established. Deuteronomy 6 tells us that we're to teach our children diligently. Hard to teach them diligently if you're not around them. Your parents did not 
raised you to keep you. They actually raised you all so that we could give you all the God. For God to use first glory in that. Again, showing that giving aspect. You have a foundation of giving established in your lives. It is the bride's father that just gave one's daughter. Again, foundation of giving. It's a blessing when a bride can have the blessing of of her parents on the marriage. And the groom is welcome to have the blessing Amen. of the parents. Well, giving to that end. A foundation of giving truly has been established. God has given to make this day possible in your lives. Your parents have given to make this day possible in your lives. And now it's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn to start giving. Yeah. Isn't a blessing? Yeah. Genesis 2.20, as it's read, uh, says, uh, But for Adam there is not found in help me for him. He was given a job, and he was working hard at it. And God, for his overall purpose, brought someone along to help in that ministry. It's for that reason, we know that Eve did not have her own ministry. She entered into his ministry. Yeah. And we see this picture in our day because the, 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 the lady loses that last name and gains the, the man's last name. Why? Because it's two becoming one. It's, it's not two looking for a tax break, and I don't know if that's even true anymore. It's, it's, not, it's not that. It's not looking for... These things, no, it's, it's God established this as one, right? They're going to operate now as one in this giving sentence. Now, we know that Eve would have to give her life to God, and then her husband, she was to fulfill what God instituted in their marriage. The same is true here for God as well. Amen. And that is a blessing. The giving aspect of marriage, though, is not just for the bride. It's for both. In 1 Corinthians 7, verse 3, it says, Let the husband render under the wife do benevolence. If you have a benevolence fund, it's a fund that's set up to help those that are needy. Amen? And it's it's a way to give. It's a way to give the needs that people have. Well, in there, it's the husband and wife render unto themselves, render unto the other, do benevolence, the Bible says. It mentions that the, that the husband's to render the wife do benevolence, likewise also the wife unto the husband. Then it says, the wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also, the husband has not power of his own body, but the wife. By the way, that's why you want to be very careful who you marry, because you're giving them power over you. You're giving them power over you so that then they can get it. It's, it's a mutual giving. This is how marriage works. And the problem with marriage is that, that something happens and a wall gets built. It's hard to give through a wall, ain't it? There, there has to be that openness thing. Amen. It's important to be able to give one to another. That, this is how God set it up. And then it says in verse 5, defraud ye not one another. Defraud means you keep back something that was meant for your spouse. Amen. Defraud ye not one another, except to be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves the fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. In marriage, we don't just give what we are comfortable giving. Amen. We seek God for how we are to operate in marriage. And then we find out what the needs are of our spouse. And then we do everything within our God-given power to fulfill and complete our spouse for the purpose and glory of God. Amen. See, most marriages aren't built that way. But a godly marriage amen. is. Amen. See, marriage starts with giving. And then marriage continues in giving. And then marriage becomes productive. As we give, uh, as we give love and life to others through our marriage, it's powerful. It's wonderful, even. So I would, I would encourage you all: don't let marriage become a self, selfish thing. A selfish marriage will never work. But a marriage based on godly giving can't fail. Cherry will never. Amen. God has demonstrated giving to you. Your parents have demonstrated giving to you. Now it's your turn to live out the spirit of giving in your marriage and in the purpose of your marriage through Christ. If you ever lose sight of this truth, um, you will struggle in your marriage. Just because you've been set up well doesn't mean you'll end well. You're going to have to have to understand what it is to give mm -hmm. and be willing to sacrificially do so. Consider what God will give you lastly. If you will be a cheerful giver. Amen. Consider this. Our text there, Second Corinthians 9, says this. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. It says, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth 
a cheerful giver, but he goes on. And it says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Man. If you will learn to be givers, you've been given to. It's, this is wonderful. But if you'll learn how to take that giving and run with it, with each other, but then together out, so that others can learn of Christ. So that if God grants you all the, the opportunity of children, you can pour them. If you will be givers and not takers, if you'll be givers and just love it, be a cheerful giver, amen, then what happens is God just turns that thing around and he just floods you with grace. He just gives you so that you abound in every good work. Giving, 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 win, 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 Man. all over the place. Yeah. Be a cheerful giver in your marriage. Start today. Do it every day until Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. Let's pray.